All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, we actually have some nice stuff to talk about today. Hopefully, I didn't wear the same orange shirt yesterday. I'm pretty sure I did a different shirt yesterday. Uh, but it's finally happened. Uh, our patience has finally paid off. My patience has paid off. Hopefully, that means I'm gonna get all my money back plus extra. You know, my stock market account should hopefully be worth 120 grand or whatever so I can get back all the money i lost all the time i lost and of course you know get uh, extra profit and then you know proceed as normals so you know i've been reading a lot of the everything store book of course and you know, he's definitely a very abusive uh, person jeff bezos but he also seems to have a lot of empathy too it's a kind of an interesting mix i still personally would not run my company like that because i'm just not like that but with that being said, uh, you know, there's still definitely some things, uh, some some common things that do, do contribute to Amazon's success, right? Keeping an open mind. Uh, I've been reading a lot. Uh, I've been reading a lot of mentions about good to great that book about a flywheel. So I've been trying to create my own flywheel, but mine's a little different. So obviously, so I'm gonna be uh, modifying that a little bit too, you know, because I'm not looking to dominate the world. You know, that's that's what Jeff Bezos wants to do, right? And you really just cannot do that, right? Because no empire lasts forever. There was a time where uh, I thought Google was on top, right? Technically, they're still up there, but, you know, now it's not so clear anymore, especially now with AI going crazy too, All right? I was watching Forcing just now, and then uh, I realized I have to make this video. And he was actually watching a video of a fat video gamer guy or YouTuber or whatever. He was pounding on the desk with a hammer and had a leaf blower blowing in the mic. And because the NVIDIA RTX AI voice filter was on, you couldn't hear any of that. It was insane. It was insane. All right. Skydat's taking over. Skydat's taking over. So, uh, so a lot of good stuff is happening. Uh, so let's find out and dig into it. Uh, so I didn't do any research. I just looked at the headlines, saw everything going up. I was like, ah, beautiful. Been waiting for this finally. All right, so Bitcoin searches have not been released for this week, though I suspect after um, this supposed new Gilead, new coronavirus treatment thing uh, is out, uh, we should be expecting some good shit. You know, that combined with the fact that everyone's opening up, including some Democrat areas, right? Not all, but some. We should be pretty good. Things should be pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin, oh, first uh, dominance Bitcoin is 64.3%. Uh, 24 hour volume is 159.4 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's at 83.17, so it's up 7.24%. Uh, it's actually up a lot, but as usual, the, the, price, uh, the price lines are screwed up as always. Litecoin's also up to 47.46, it's up a nice 6%. Uh, Doggy coin 301.1 million market cap, also worth a nice amount. Hive is, see now I can cover Hive because it's actually on the front page finally, so it's nice and convenient. Hive is at 44, it's basically 45 cents a piece. It looks like it's stabilizing. Steam is somewhere down at 19.32 cents. So overall, uh, the exception of a couple coins in the red, obviously, ish, um, everything is basically up. Stock markets itself is also up quite a bit, so uh, let's see. Stocks rise on coronavirus treatment, so we're definitely going to read that at the end. Um, GDP dropped 4.8% since 2008, and this was government-induced, so yeah. The globalists tried to screw us over, and they failed for now. Uh, Let's see, uh, this should be refreshed, yeah. I mean, Joe Biden still has a lot of chance, but Trump should still have a, a small but comfortable enough margin to wiggle his way to re-election. Um, German infection rate ticks higher after reopening moves, uh, offers less than the US. So obviously they're trying to keep the shutdown going as long as possible because these evil globalist assholes just can't fucking help themselves. So it's kind of really started to annoy the shit out of me. Uh, let's see. Google beats Wall Street expectations. Oh, yeah, but this is before coronavirus. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Kelsey Sue's SBA. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. All right. So GMC coins at 7 to 9. Very good. Uh, 404, 7 to 8. So what's nice is everything's going up, but these prices are remaining stable. So that means this is the value of this is also going up, too. 
while you're still printing, you know, for the time being, true APR returns. So it's very nice. Two by two is, oh, there it goes, 69 to 72, but a lot of volatility here. It looks like it's on the upswing, though, so that's good. And, of course, compound coin continues to chug along. Uh, 5,300, 5,500 to, I guess, 60. Yeah, a little under 6,200 Satoshis of a dog coin. I don't feel like saying the whole damn thing. Uh, Bitcoin halving, what it means. Bitcoin halving is around for some large traders. Yeah, because it's already priced in. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 13 days until halving, so that's in two weeks. Uh, that's plenty of time. Nurse of Tokyo's orc says age of fiat lovers is over. No, it's got... Oh God. Fiat will never go away, all right? On top of that, it's... It again, all America has to do is create a digital dollar. It's not that hard, right? They can probably do it within a week. Uh, Bitcoin hit AK hit a phobic update, wiping out coronavirus losses. Uh, da, 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 yeah, I mean, Bitcoin and crypto has already gone through their bear market, so they really just cannot go down that much further. Tron brings blockchain apps to mobile consumers with new Samsung integration DAP partnership. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like Tron because Justin Sun's clearly a fucking asshole. But it clearly does pay off. That's why he's doing all these big, uh, um, these big deals. Side commercial bank Ripple launch new room and server for 16 million customers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, pop as how the approaches. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, Bitcoin was supposed to was already on its way up, and then coronavirus hit. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it can't hurt. It can't hurt, right? And you know, whatever. But at this point, all I care about is just things going up. So whatever. We'll take it a day at a time. But just enjoy the ride because it's finally, it's finally here. Um, uh, crypto analyst, uh, SEC commissioner says crypto in infancy expects increasing number of. Yep, da, da, da. New York regulars, New York Council play key role in Silk Road investigation. Uh, Introduce new fact checking. Say, well, stop Bitcoin and XRP scammers. Uh, do you say help viewer? Oh my God, uh, we're a fact checker. Let's see. Yeah, and who's it going to come from, right? Are you going to launch its fact check? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're actually going to have to cover that because it's about censorship. So I actually refiled Trump. So, you know, he's going through a lot. Obviously, he's not perfect, but he'll never be perfect. And, um, you know, he's doing the best that he can. So, you know, I usually don't like that because usually when that happens, that Trump decides to just go like, you know, like a hot woman in hot, a high maintenance. She just decides to just be like, you know, a huge cunt after you show her some being nice and then you have to be an asshole. And it's very annoying. Uh, in this case, though, I think it might be okay for now because everyone's basically an asshole. So, you know, that, at least those assholes will keep Trump in check. You know, the report apologizes to Trump for making false credibility. Yep. I say admit the failure to never correct or fake reporting. Uh, yeah. With that being said. Uh, yeah, here's the other thing, too. Democrats and Joe Biden owe a lot of shit to China, too. So it'd be really easy for Trump to just say, what are you talking about? Like, look at you. You know, you owe even more. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like the uh, the Me Too movement, right? They thought they could uh, take out all the conservatives and Republicans. Well, it turns out they already did take them all out. They all and they all migrate. And some of them, if they can, even, they can call themselves Republicans or conservatives, Moved, the rapists moved over to the Democrat side. So that's why Hollywood blew up and they had to throw somebody under a bus and Harvey Weinstein drew the short stick. Mm. You know? I actually was doing a little bit of research on the Weinstein company too. Because, you know, because again, I'm going to eventually create my own media company too. So I'm going to, you know, do all that fancy stuff. Ironically, the Weinstein company tried to move into video games and nothing came of it. You know, I'm the opposite. I know video games, but I also know movies pretty well. And of the two, video games is actually harder, right? Because you have there's a lot there's a lot more you, like you actually have to hire smart people to do all the coding or do the coding yourself, right? Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I don't see anything new. Let's see what does Cuomo have to say? Uh, Mario, here fake your probably can't maintain it. Also, I don't mask. Forget about it. Yeah. The stereo open play about what is the goal? Although we call the factual to be a real world pro. Oh, this is from yesterday, and here's the dialogue. So he's been pretty vague about the reopening part. 
yeah, just have everybody just wear masks or some shit. And then if people don't have masks, then they don't have masks. Because, like, it's hard enough to get masks. So you can't really blame people for not having any fucking masks. I finally got mine from, uh, well, it was shipped from China, of course. Oh, and I bought it on Amazon. And it took, like, two weeks for me to get the fucking three reusable cloth masks. So, you two, I also do have a scarf that I could use as, like, a makeshift ghetto mask, too. YouTube introduces new fact-checking system while it stops the scammers. All right, so let's see. We'll launch its fact-checking panel uh, in the U.S. following a rollout in Brazil and India. A fact-checking features prior response to coronavirus misinfo, and of course, uh, it's going to be used to censor everyone. And blah 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 blah. YouTube's new factory feature will use information panels to verify news articles on a fast-moving site by connecting people with over a dozen authoritative sources. The feature will tap over a dozen U.S. public clean fact checker, pull out a fact, the dispatch, and the Washington Post fact checker. Uh, well, probably it probably should be a lot easier to sue these people too. So I'm like, because I'm thinking like when I become public, they start attacking me. Like so, for example, let's say they call, accuse me of being a neo-Nazi. That's pretty obvious that I'm not. But the thing is, everyone just throws that around. So. Uh, the thing is, it's the CDA thing too. Like, uh, YouTube is still technically protected by CDA 230, so it would still be hard for me to really sue YouTube. Because <clears throat> obviously damages are being caused. So, let's say that happens, something happens to me, and then, you know, I get banned on YouTube and it's unfair. <clears throat> then what I can do is name everybody, YouTube will claim CDA 230 immunity. These other sites will not be able to do that. Because they're obviously publishers, they're not platforms. Uh, and then I'll be able to win my case because obviously I can prove I'm not a neo-Nazi. I just like to retweet people on Twitter, all right? <laughs> so like, like what? <laughs> uh, you know, and I tell you, neo-Nazi is a fact, uh, is really being thrown around as an opinion. People think are facts, but in court, that doesn't work. It's like you have to actually prove that factually this person's a neo-Nazi. It's like, does he have the swastika set? Does he do Hitler salutes? Does he do all that crazy Nazi stuff? And the answer is clearly no. <laughs> and they're like, uh, yeah. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to say, okay, so here's the amount of money I lost because of uh, my YouTube channel getting uh, broken. And then here's the cost of me having to rehire everybody and do re everything. And then the cost of getting back all my subscribers. Here's the, because I obviously am going to do advertising to get my subscriber count. Right? That's actual financial damages, and then I can take all their fucking money. Right? And of course, there's gonna be good press from this too, because obviously people really want. Because now that I'm reading the Everything Store book, I could definitely see that a lot of these people don't like each other. Right? They respect each other. Well, I shouldn't say don't like each other. They respect each other, but they clearly understand that each other are rivals. But they're actually pretty cool about it too. You know, it's like, hey, you know, Google's poaching all our engineers. And then I was like, yeah, let's poach their engineers. And then they were like, eh, okay. I mean, it's just how it goes. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just imagine two effeminate beta male geek nerds just going, eh, eh, oh, that hurt. Uh, take this. Uh, uh, you want to get coffee at Starbucks? Uh, yeah, it's got soy. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's basically how it is. <laughs> all right, all right. We're now using pals to help address the situation. Faster to do. But how they are there are no for real. They can make their own forks. Golden Pavement's completely ripple to you. I recently filed a lawsuit against YouTube. Yeah, this is probably also pissing, uh, making things a little. So here's the thing, how would you use these, these articles still wouldn't stop scammers. I mean, the scammers will just pop out of nowhere. So yeah, YouTube's just using this as an excuse to just do more censorship, unfortunately. YouTube say a bit about its new fact-checking shit, makes no mention of targeting scammers who are using platform to try to The company says new will take some time to fully ramp up. Da, 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 da. Yeah, see, they even admit right here. Yeah, this is all about censorship, right? Um, but with that being said, I mean, I still haven't been told an answer because nobody's asking, nobody's even asking this question, which is, what is the benefit of censorship? There clearly is a benefit to censorship. That's why Google's going out of their way to spend a lot of money to create this fact-checking censorship tool, right? Because that's what it's going to be. It's a censorship tool, right? I'll still be on YouTube because I don't do, like, any crazy shit, right? 
you know, and I'm not doing political stuff anywhere. There's a, like political stuff is more or less dead on mainstream sites. The only place you can do it is on BitChute and Gab, but there's a reason why those sites are not really growing. Right? It's really more of like a uh I don't I still can't come up with the term for it, but there's a very mm, I wanna say low ceiling to your growth rate. There's gonna be a time where you're gonna be limited. Uh, and I can't and I don't wanna be limited. All right. Because I think about it this way. If you go on Gab and you're like a left wing person, why would you go there? All right. You're not gonna get any growth. Everyone's gonna be hostile towards you, and you can't ban or block anybody. You can't uh, rep mass report somebody to Andrew Torba because he's likely not gonna ban uh, his customers, right? Because he's not stupid. And um, yeah, you're, you're just gonna be like, well, there's no growth here. Well, what's the point, right? I can't grow a following here, right? So you're just going to go back to the mainstream sites, right? Where you would be appreciated, right? You know, there's, pl there's plenty of shit lives running around Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, right? That's also why they're, and, and they they also have a money. That's why they're, <laughs> that's why these big tech companies cater to them, right? Whereas conservatives, we're just very annoying to deal with, you know, for the most part. And our ideas naturally limit growth too. So it's like, you know what? We'll just resort to censorship, right? And that's what exactly what Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and, you know, so on and so forth are doing. So, yeah, there is a benefit to it, right? Uh, right now, I think the thing I can come up with is it, you just make more money doing it. I, I Like that was like if we put it in basic terms. Because think about it, right? When Amazon, like right now, it's, it's not that uh, different. I mean, it's not that um what's the word i'm looking for it's not that weird right where you go on amazon and then like you see uh hold on let me make sure galaxy of heroes is running at bit heroes it's not weird to go on amazon and see all the um like the comments and reviews and stuff like both the negative and the positives right but with that being said back when amazon did it in like 2000 ish it turned out that it was actually a really big controversy and, uh, and when amazon was still like a bookstore like that's how amazon started out all the book publishers and suppliers were like getting very angry at amazon about it right and there was actually a chapter devoted to that and um you know what is and i thought yeah i can understand why because you have, if you allow negative reviews people are not going to buy your book right and that's why they don't do that right and that's why they don't allow it right that's censorship well, it's the same exact thing that's playing out right now on a massive internet scale, right? If people are allowed to criticize TPUSA or certain uh, organizations on the left, right? Usually establishments, you know, rich people. Uh, if, you if you talk the real truth talk, right? And even criticize the country in the Middle East that cannot be named or criticized. Well, they're going to lose a lot of money, right? And they're going to lose a lot of power and their grip over America and all this other stuff. And it's going to create a cascading negative effect for big tech so of course they're going to censor everybody right because they have to protect themselves uh from truth talkers right from the nick functuses of the world from the fake right when they used to be an actual champion of the truth now they're actually part of the establishment i still see people occasionally bashing china it's really fucking pissing me off right i i, I challenge these stupid same stupid f-word fucktards to challenge uh, the unnamed country in the Middle East that cannot be criticized. Oh, you're so fucking brave. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I fought, I, I fought terrorists. Yeah, okay, then why, why don't you use your entire following and go criticize that country and see what happens, right? You want to talk tough, tough against China and, like, Chinese people and, like, not fucking actually solve the actual fundamental problem, right? Because if you're going to criticize China, why aren't you criticizing the companies that do business with China? Why aren't you criticizing the fact that, you know we actually bring in a lot of Chinese investment money. Why aren't you going after that? Why aren't you going after the politicians, the ones that sent you to war too? You know, I'm specifically referring also to this, uh, the Navy SEAL who actually killed, fired the killing Sean Osama bin Laden. Like, the guy's a fucking ass, racist asshole. Fuck him, you know? It's like, it's really pissing me off, right? So if it, continue, if it keeps going, you know, it's not going to be long before, you know, like... You know, I do actually start get, starting to get a little concerned if I go to Chinatown and then like, you know, obviously there's a lot of Chinese people there. 
You know, what, what if somebody's loved one died from coronavirus and they decided to shoot up this place, right? You know, just like what happened in Dayton, Ohio, the guy didn't like black people. And then uh, the El Paso guy, he didn't like Hispanic people because, actually, I don't want to say the worst because I don't want the AI and YouTube to actually flag this shit, right? But he killed them because they were Hispanic, right? Because, you know, he was a very angry right-wing guy that, you know, um, didn't have an outlet, right? So, you know, we all heard about that. So, you know, people are getting fucking angry, right? And they don't know what else to do. So, you know, uh, yeah, the Republicans are still fucking uh, bashing China for some reason. It's like, like, what? <laughs> you know, and of course, the liberal, the Democrats are doing like a 50-50 split. They're criticizing China for being racist against Muslims and blacks. And on the other half, you have, you know, Andrew Wang type. Andrew Wang, Andrew Yang types, of course, you know, on the other diverse coalition of Democrat Party to say we're all Americans. We're, you know, don't have racism, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's like, come on. Everyone's just being a dishonest, racist asshole. It's really pissing me off. But uh, yeah, but anyway, at least Nick Fuentes has backed off of his China bashing. So that's all I really care about. You know, and Michelle Malkin's been pretty fair. Like, yeah, she'll criticize China, but. She actually does address the root problem, right? Student Chinese student visas, Chinese investment money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as long as you're actually talking about the fundamentals, then I'm actually okay with it. Also, she's willing to name the uh, country in the Middle East that cannot be named or criticized. But that's because she's Michelle Malkin. I cannot do that, but she can. So I know for a fact that she's not actually being a racist because she's actually being fair and criticizing everyone, all right? But the other Republican types... They just want to bash China, but they won't bash the other country that I cannot name. Uh, and that's how I know. That's how I know. And it's just really pissing me off. Um, you know, and I think Mike Cernovich is also starting to get kind of angry at China, too, because he's still occasionally retweeting that stuff. So, I don't know. Uh, but it's, uh, he, he better stop doing that. Anyway, uh, stock market news live updates. Stocks rise in hopes of coronavirus uh, treatments. All right, so actually... I kind of will do what, oh God, this is such a weird picture, but I'm going to try to stuff the headline with this thing and this uh, new coronavirus treatment. All right, let's see. Stocks advance today as investors consider positive updates from Gilead over the results of a trial of coronavirus treatment. News eclipsed a dismal report on the GDP. Yes, because we already priced that in. Uh, da, 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 da. uh the us economy contracted by four yeah i don't care a drop off and blah, blah, blah. yeah we already know that we don't care we want to know about the fucking treatment uh it'll deepen in the second quarter well no it'll stop i mean we'll we'll, we'll see it doesn't matter the economy will continue to fall the country uh, opens back up i've been saying that <clears throat> now i'm losing my voice <clears throat> blah 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 Later was there soon, the Fed will release its latest monetary policy decision. Uh, the lower end, I mean, it's already at zero, so they can't do much more. The Fed's unconventional policy measures have eclipsed even those seen during the full goal for including the open-ended asset period, which I've seen the Fed by one. All right, this is mostly about the fucking economy. Will you tell me about, oh, Jesus Christ, this, this fucking worthless ass article. Uh, let's see, coronavirus Gilead treatment. Let's let's see if we can just do this. I don't want to turn off my um my 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 proxy because I'm gonna to forget to turn it back on. Business is, I really don't want, I don't want to give any of these assholes because business is sorry, it's the least shitty of the, all of them. But the problem is um they have a they have that stupid paywall. Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's hit the X button. All right, yeah, all good. I was able to stop it. All right, Gilead's coronavirus remdesivir just succeeded in a critical study, raising hopes for the first treatment. Okay. Alita, we're definitely going to put this thing in here, uh, this keyword, remdesivir. Alita coronavirus treatment can succeed in a clinical trial. Critical trial. The biotech company Gilead Sciences said Wednesday. Antiviral drug Remdesivir is being tested in several ongoing trials of the Gilead data that one of these studies run by the U.S. National Institutes of Health show the drug works. Ooh. Uh, we understand the trial has met its primary endpoint that 
uh, whatever that means. We'll provide detailed info at the next briefing. The company also released data on its own site suggests that a five-day treatment course worked just as well as a 10-day regimen. This trial, however, lacked a control group to compare results against. There are no drugs approved to treat coronavirus. Gilead did not say if or when it plans to file remdesivir for approval. I mean, yeah, they're obviously you're still testing it. <clears throat> but uh, with that being said, coronavirus is, does pose a fundamental threat and problem to the globalists. So they're not going to actually, <clears throat> uh, you know, screw this up, right? Because uh, they have to. And with that being said, that doesn't mean they're not going to try to screw Trump over and, you know, populists, you know. All right. right now, the focus is on right wing populists, you know, because the left wing populists have obviously proven themselves to completely to be completely useless. Right. All they're doing is just complaining about Bernie Sanders and then they're going to turn right around and vote for Joe Biden and the Democrats. So, you know, all right, that's fine. Uh, elite coronavirus treatment. Well, actually, it's not fine, but, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not in that camp. So, you know, it's like, do that. It's like, you're, you're not going to change anything. I mean, shit, even AOC had to back down against Amazon. All right. AOC of all people. So, Yeah. <laughs> Elite coronavirus treatment can The antiviral drug Remdesivir is being tested in several ongoing trials of patients. Okay. Uh, Gilead said one of these studies run by the U.S. National Institutes of Health shows the drug works. The company didn't provide any additional data. We understand the trial has met. Okay. So they're just repeating what it said above. Am I reading the same thing? Uh, uh, as, uh, as I report, have largely just put early study results. Okay, so remdesivir is, seems to be the whatever. So I bet if they could come up with some sort of like uh, human tolerable hydrochloroquine, whatever that thing is, and the remdesivir, create a safe enough t cocktail, I guess you could call it. Uh, yeah, you could probably defeat coronavirus. Uh, of course, obviously, it's going to have crazy side effects, and it's probably still going to have a high chance of killing you simply because it's like these are pretty, these are generally very lethal drugs, right? So you, know, you got to be careful, you know, because again, you don't want a situation where you're going to use chemotherapy to treat acne on your face. <laughs> you know, you can see the extremes right there. Gilead drug has not been approved to treat any disease, but was previously tried in Ebola patients. Ah, so they do, so they even have previous testing data to work with. That's really good. Um, having an effective treatment, how long is this article? Oh, okay. Because I thought it was, because it was repeating itself, you know, this was just going to be a short article. Having an effective treatment against coronavirus would be significant in the day. Uh, it's been given an IV infusion. Uh, it has only been tested in hospitalized patients. It has not been tested in preventive treatment health or help people with mild cases of it. Yeah, this sounds like something that you would give to someone if they're in the hospital. Gilead announced we boosted the entire stock market on Wednesday morning. The stock road. Gilead also released it through its own trial and ran on three ninety-seven patients. That's a pretty decent uh, sample size of severe coronavirus patients. The study did not compare patients who got the drug to a group that got a placebo, making the results more difficult to interpret. It tested five ten-day regimens. I mean, it's really hard to do placebos on this because the group that gets the placebo, they might die from their coronavirus. So it's like you know, we, we don't want to let them die, you know. So you have to give everyone the real thing. But yeah, we do need to know, does this actually work? <sighs> I don't know. Um, I mean, this thing is just lethal. I mean, people are, I mean, now we know what the actual mortality rate is. It pretty much matches the flu in a lot of cases. Uh, but with that being said, I mean, a lot of people still think it's highly lethal. So it's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to do a uh, placebo, placebo group. And you can't tell the placebo group either because that's the point of a placebo. So it's like, ah, what do you do? Gilead's chief medical officer said Gilead's results complement the data from the NIH's placebo control trial and are intended to help figure out the right dose to give patients. The trial generates similar results for patients. The study there showed the potential of severe treatment with a finite regimen, which could soon expand the number of patients who could be treated with our current supply regimen. Yeah, because basically you double your doses, so which means you could double you could double your treatment amounts. That's that's really good. 100% increase in treatment? Yeah, I'll take it. These new five-day course can effectively double... Oh, yeah, I just said that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Beyond the two treatment durations where similar conclusions from Gilead's study are limited by its design, since there's no control arm, it's difficult to determine just from this data of remedy to help patients. 
Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of factors, Chris, because there are a lot of people who do recover from, most people will recover from coronavirus if they have it. So, uh, for instance, Rome found something more than half of the control patients left the hospital within two weeks of starting treatment. Similar to how meaningful that finding is in a disease where the vast majority of people recover on their own anyway. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Uh, all right, well, I mean, well, it'll be more testing, you know. I guess, you know, actually, you could probably do a control group during the summer, right? When, pro when flu season is basically over, and this thing acts a lot like the flu. And there's obviously clear evidence that warm weather actually has a direct negative impact to coronavirus cells, which is good, obviously, because we want that, right? So that would probably be the best time, because then you'll have a lot fewer cases, and it'll be naturally already be hot. So, you know, you have a lot more to work with. Right now, it just sucks because, you know, everyone's got coronavirus, apparently. So, uh, yeah. All right. But either way, this will have to be the thumbnail, but this is very good news. I'm obviously going to have the keyword stuff with Remdesivir or whatever. Um, so if you like what you saw, read, or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from. Or on my YouTube at youtube.com forward slash JMC radio. Make sure you smash the subscribe button on the right hand side of this page so we can continue growing this channel. All right, so I actually have stuff to do, mostly just continue reading. Uh, I really just wanted to stop reading my book, but now it's getting interesting again because I just didn't care about certain details at Amazon. Uh, but, you know, it's actually interesting, right? They've been battling Google, they've been battling Barnes and Nobles, they've been battling everybody. Amazon ultimately came out on top. And now that we have artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency uh, oh, excuse me, um, on the horizon, well, yeah, I mean, uh, things are going to be changing. And in the meantime, I'm finding, I'm still trying to figure out what how I'm going to deal with it. Because I've never actually really considered myself a free speech warrior, even though I support free speech. But, I mean, I understand that ultimately we all do censorship, right? I just happen to be honest about it. You know, all these free speech wars of today, you know... With the exception of Michelle Malkin, uh, I don't think I don't think anybody's really a free speech warrior. They think they are, but they're not. Because once they get power, what are they going to start doing? Right? They're going to start censoring uh, non-Christian things. Right? You know, you might not even be allowed to say the word "fuck" anymore. Right? In the past, you weren't actually allowed to do that. Now you can. Right? Nowadays, the new F word is you know, I can't even say it. Right? But it relates to sexuality in a certain way. Uh, you know. I want to live in a society where I can say both F words and not have to worry about it, right? But I don't think that it's going to happen uh, anytime soon, all right? Unless I do something about it. So now I have to figure out how. And that is where I am at in my current evolution of myself, right? But in the meantime, at least I'll get rich. I'll have my be wonderful, beautiful, probably hat book family, right? Uh, I now understand... Now, I really just have to leave New York City, right? The, the women here are just way too, like, crazy by, you know, because it's fucking New York City, so I'm just not going to find anybody. Unless I move to Staten Island, but I'm not going to do that. It's time for me to go. So I'm going to move to Tampa, Florida. It's going to be nice. There's going to be a lot more conservative people there. It's going to be more space. It's going to be a lot cheaper. And it's Florida, too. So it'll be a really good base of operations, not only for everything I'm going to do, but also for buying real estate, because it's also cheaper. Uh, everything's just better. Um, yeah, on top of that, you know, maybe it'll be interesting to see why things are actually shifting leftward in Florida, right? Because Tampa actually is 44% Trump and 54% or whatever for, Hil uh, for Hillary Clinton in the Tampa district, right? So I assume it's going to be demographics, but it could be uh, something else too. But it's also 66% white. And the whites there are split 50-50 between Democrat and Republican. So I find that pretty interesting. So it'll be, it's going to be a very nice, interesting dynamic for me to live in. So I want to be able to observe that. Uh, plus, it's right by the ocean. So it's going to be really nice. Uh, you know, I, I have to just be by the uh, ocean, right? You know, so, you know, I, you know, oh, yeah, that means I could probably eventually buy, like, a boat or something, too, and go, and go sailing around the Florida coast. That would be kind of cool. Right? I mean, that's what rich people like to do, right? Sail around the world or some stupid shit like that. Anyway, I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. i got a lot of research to do. I need to finish my book, uh, and, then, and then hopefully I can start working on the tower defense game, right? With the, uh, what is it, the Invictus thing or whatever. The module I showed yesterday or something. It was like 60 bucks for Unity. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow. Enjoy the uh, bull run gains. And uh, yeah, I actually bought a little extra Remel today. I had some um, I had some dividends from AMZA, right? And it's like thirteen dollars or whatever. So I spent four twelve dollars of it buying, you know, four extra shares of Remel, right? I mean, eventually this will go back to twenty seven dollars. So buying it for three bucks now—that's how much I had to pay. Uh, that then becomes twenty-seven dollars. That's a pretty decent nine percent return. Those are usually pretty hard to get returns in the stock market. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely learned my lesson. Stock market will be treated exactly like crypto. So, um, oh yeah, we need a thumbnail. So, yep, see you tomorrow. Thanks, Johnson Chan, JMC Coin, four hundred four Coin. Ah, I wish this was a better looking thumbnail.